have application forms for you all to fill in today. Okay, and then we're going to go through why you have to fill out an application form and the interview techniques, the sort of questions that you'll be asked when you're out on an interview. I work for the East Berkshire Education Business Partnership. We have a number of companies that we use to put students out on work experience so they can gain an insight into what they actually want to do when they leave school. I've got six and a half years experience working in autism. However, my background is, I suppose, best way to describe it is the real world. Civil Service, European Space Agency, working in mainstream jobs. So coming into working with people with autism and say, looking at it from a perspective of trying to get people employed and actually knowing what an employer wants. So trying to deliver things that are usable in the workplace, things that people will, aren't, too aren't too intrusive and things that will help somebody to work as opposed to help somebody to you know, write, write things for an exam. We do get the students to fill out application forms for their work experience so we know a little bit about them and their hobbies, interests and things like that. So this morning we got them filling out their application forms and from then we asked them to do a little bit of role playing. Uh, the sort of questions they'd be asked, what about your appearance, what should you be wearing, timekeeping, sort of questions you'll be asked. I got them to write down some various different ideas, which are very good. It's mainly putting some, them into thinking mode so that they, they sort of get themselves prepared. You know, I will be asked questions, but what sort of questions will I be asked? Thank you very much. You've filled out your application form. Thank you very much. I see you've um, got a little bit of experience with cooking. MVQ level one in catering, MVQ level one in catering. Right, okay, so you've got your MVQs. David has done an MVQ in Business and Admin, uh, Level 1. Uh, we're looking to place him at Barclays Bank. Banks really interest him, and I think he'd be very capable. He's a very capable lad, and he's keen to learn, so I think he'd do really, really well. Our policies at, at Barclays have always been about um, attracting, retaining, and motivating the best possible talent, because that's what we want to have in the organisation, and that's what will ultimately linked to the success of the organisation and no one has the monopoly on what is the best talent. So from our point of view it's about treating people fairly, not concentrating on what people can't do but concentrating on what people can do and then also what we can do as an employer to make sure that we put in the processes to make sure that our employees can fulfil to their full potential. I think from a lot of employers point of view one of the big problems is, oh my goodness I've got to roll out lots of stuff for this one person. Um, whereas the reality is, is once a student makes that transition to work, if they've been given the proper tools and taught to use those tools in an educational setting, and then those are moved out into a workplace, those tools aren't that intrusive. As long as the system's set up and stuck to, most jobs are routine work. We can support that. So, for example, um, something like this, which is a task box. Um, here at Heaven Man, we use the tasks for, we have four sessions in a day. You have your tasks in each session, one, two, three, four. And then jobs that you would do, and it's job one and two. In the workplace, you could, which is, this is really is a filing system that you'd find in the workplace. Your jobs for the day could be put in task one, task two, task three, task four. The sheets of the work are as you know, simple as this. So we have the things to do list, which is very much like a diary. And then that relates to this, who puts task one, number one, and what the job is. And then they're ticked off as they're finished. Then this would be a task sheet. Um, so it says literally, step by step, how to do the job. Now this isn't a sheet that just sits around, and it just goes into an organiser like anybody else. And again, non-obtrusive, which means the person who's working in the workplace doesn't feel marked special. And also it means the workplace still looks professional. If someone with autism was to get a, a role in Barclays, say in a branch, mm. and for example, how would you see the, the task box working in that environment? Right, um, from my perspective, best bet would be is for someone like myself to go in, look at the work that they'll be doing, you know, break into a routine, and then we would create task sheets to support that person, put them into the uh, box and trial it. So we teach the jobs using the task sheets so the person with autism moving into that role 
would then be able to access it and know what they're doing. What we would do is trial and restructure. So when more support is needed, we can add more support. Where there's a problem, we can change the support and try and sort out the problem. And where less support is needed, we can fade the support back a bit. Well, the Disabilities Trust are training employers to work with people with autism, highlighting uh, things like the communications problems, the social problems, the need for you know, good visual information and to you know, make things clear and concise, which are actually just very good practice when you're dealing with any employee. Um, you know, any employee wants to know what their working day is going to be like, what their responsibilities are and you know, how they go about dealing with the job. The course itself um, will be half an hour from now. Uh, mainly, there's a lot of information out there on autism, but when you're delivering information like that, if you, unless you're a professional working in that environment, you're not going to want to spend a day listening to it. And it's tailoring it so that it meets the needs without becoming you know, too much. Along with that is dealing with the stress. Um, people with autism do suffer from a lot of stress and of anxiety brought about by living in a society which is very verbal. And when you're processing skills for verbal information are very low, it means that you, you find it very difficult to understand what's going on. We'll be looking at how people in the workplace with autism can manage their stress, their anxiety, and what help you can provide in spotting those signs of, so you can say, do you need some time out? Rather than something turning from anxiety, anxiousness, into something that could be you know, potentially very upsetting for the person and the people around them. We don't want to set up somebody with autism to fail. From our perspective, we look at everything and we would say which situations suit them best um, if some with autism. And a lot of guys with autism find customer facing very difficult because of the social communication issues. We're going to say, we don't think that this is a good idea, but these are the strengths. You had your break, David. Could you be able to just do these few dishes that are left? Thank you. David will, is, is a helping hand. Um, he certainly will help us with any little jobs on the preparation side, but it's a huge help when he helps us with some of the dishes. David has, has been with us a little while now. He's, he's been coming to us for the last year, and so he's aware of some of those tasks and how to do them by himself, where the dishes, the boxes, how to keep this to the right standard. But if we were to be preparing food together, then we, I would work alongside him and work very closely with him to show him that task. This is pork stroganoff. Do you know what goes in pork stroganoff? Rice. Yes, we're having rice, we're having wild rice on the side. This one is mushroom stroganoff. This is the yogurt that I put into the stroganoff. And we just put in all these little pots. So, so with this um, yogurt, we just stir it in like this and it thickens, that's what it's doing, it's thickening the sauce to give it a very rich sauce. He smiles instantly if he's really happy with something and we get a lot of smiles throughout the day and I think he really enjoys it. Like business admin, don't you? So you have to have things in order, don't you? People with disabilities can do normal everyday jobs the same as you and I can and it's making sure businesses are aware of this so we like to try and uh, emphasise this by getting businesses involved and we have numbers of businesses that are willing to help us out with students with special needs where they actually put them in for work experience and the, the students really do benefit from it. We've gained a lot from working with the Disability Trust. Through the work placement we've been able to see what it's like for us when we employ someone with autism and what practical things we can put in place to make sure that our workplace is both more inclusive but also that we get the most out of the employee. Our colleagues who have had the chance to visit Heather Mount have been able to see um, a, a broad spectrum of people with autism and all the different skills and experience that they have and how those could be related into the work environment and in return our colleagues have been able to have a talk about what it's like working in a corporate environment and applying for roles and going through an interview process and hopefully that's been an educational piece for both parties.